welcome back to the class everyone today we're going to be addressing a topic that i've wanted to talk about for a really long time but because of how the economy was in game i wasn't really sure on a few things but with some recent changes due to the raid i've kind of come to terms and i think we have a really good list going forward so we're going to be talking about the core eight teams in galaxy of heroes now what do i mean by core teams when you're building a roster particularly probably in the mid game we want to focus on certain teams that are a accessible and b that'll help you gather a ton of resources to be able to grow your roster as fast as possible regardless if you're free to play or pay to play so i do have the teams here we're going to talk about them in depth but before we talk about the teams themselves I want to address some rules or some guidelines as to how we even came across these teams in the first place, why we chose these ones over other ones, and just so you can have a good idea and really know what we're after here. So what is something we're looking for on a core team? A core team has to have building block elements. What do we mean by this? They have to give you resources somewhere in the beginning or mid game. There's a ton of events, whether they be individual events or reoccurring events, they're going to be going on. They're going to give you credits or mods or gear doesn't really matter they just have to give you something this is one of the reasons why tuscans aren't going to land on this list because tuscans really don't yield you any rewards until you get all the way to the end game at the crate dragon raid where really they have to be r7 so it's not they're not a relevant building block team we're going to be talking about a lot of those uh, other thing that is really important is we want to aim for teams that have a high amount of characters that are requirements for other stronger characters like galactic legends characters like star killer or gas and in that area we, we want to be building up as much as we can rather than just getting an okay team and being done uh, the other thing that a core team really needs to have they need to be accessible so that's why we don't want to aim for full chirotech teams what do i mean by full chirotech teams there are a handful of characters that's not true actually there's a ton of characters out there that require about three to four hundred chirotech just to get them up to like gear 12. this is okay when it's one or two characters on a team gas is actually a really great example of this general skywalker himself needs chirotech but the rest of the 501st doesn't but there's teams like bad batch who i love bad batch and what's really unfortunate is bad batch like tick every single box on this thing except this one but it's ballpark 2000 chirotech to be able to gear them up and with all the recent gear changes with get three and gear being accelerated and the new raid kind of helping things even out the one thing that's really still hurting is chirotech i'm not saying that it's impossible to get but if we can avoid it so that we can build up other things so we can get more of it that is what we want to do first so bad batch unfortunately inquisitors they're not going to make it onto the list because of that only accelerated characters this kind of goes without saying anyone who's in the mid game or beginning game trying to build up a roster we can't be going after these new premium characters right away for end game it's very relevant you don't want to hold off on them but you want to wait at least a year for a new character so that you can get them for essentially half the price uh, no one game mode heroes there's a lot of Omicrons out there right now. Omicrons are game-specific abilities or game-mode-specific abilities where a character will really excel in GAC or TW. That's great. It's awesome. I love it. But when we're looking, again, at building a roster, you can't build up Qui-Gon Jinn and just expect to get rewards from everywhere in the game. It's unfortunate. I love the team, but it's he's like the eighth best Jedi leader outside of GAC. So can't rely on those and finally no conquest characters and the reason for that is if you don't have any and you have to go through proving grounds it's a nightmare don't really want to talk about it but it's gonna it pretty much takes you years free to play to be able to unlock a new conquest character assuming you don't have any shards so that's pretty much it defining them now let's actually get into the teams and explain why we chose the eight teams that we did so we're gonna start off with gas and this isn't in any specific order by the way this isn't like do this team before that one everybody's roster kind of grows in every way as long as you can get them then you'll just be great. But I want to talk about General Skywalker first because one of the things that's happened recently is his shards just became super accessible because not only can you get them through the get store, which that wasn't super great for a long time, you can get them through crystals, that's kind of cool, but this is where the sweet spot is. You can now get, I can't, but you can get General Skywalker out of the MK2 store, meaning we did the math on this, you can farm him in like a month and a half assuming you're getting like one of the lowest levels in the new crate raid or even if you're not even if you're like stuck with heroic sith raid you're still getting this currency you're still getting that currency he is incredibly more accessible than he was before 
and the team is just good and a huge variety of game modes they're one of the most important teams in geonosis territory battles they are very good in gac and tw and gc they're typically one of the teams that floats in and out of a galactic legend counters and then on top of that they're also just really good for conquest because since you're always using the team on offense the ai typically plays it pretty poorly and they're going to end up killing fives through sacrifice and giving a huge bunch of bonus stats here so not always a three star in conquest but one of the ways that you can get through teams that otherwise you just might not be able to overall very good team and also has building block elements in as well gas arc and echo i believe are all needed for lord vader eventually later down the line uh next up is going to be rebels rebels do have a really important assault battle that is something we haven't directly addressed yet but a lot of these teams are going to be aiming for ones that can beat the last tier in the assault battle for those of you who are unaware assault battles are a reoccurring event that happen about once a month each and they just give a stupid amount of good rewards they give zetas they give omegas they give chirotech they give gear 12 uh, finishers as well as some other thing oh even relic materials so these are things that you want to have on farm so that again you can start with your core teams start amassing a bunch of resources and start going to more niche teams that we've kind of talked about like qui-gon jinn so overall really good this team also really prepares you in fact it prepares you perfectly for jedi master luke as well as jedi knight luke at least for some of them they are also just amazing in pvp so very similar to gas where they're kind of right on the edge of being able to beat a lot of galactic legends if they have the right mods or if they get the right data cron or whatever they need so again great team good for getting a lot of resources they're a little bit trickier to get but there's still a very low amount of cairo because you need like ewoks to get 3po you need bounty hunters to get chewbacca uh, Han is pretty accessible now with the Ray, and then CLS is a journey character. But again, all these characters are accessible, and they're going to be building up to that. So I realize it's not a exactly an early game team, but it's something you want to have to, again, build and build and build. Next up is going to be the Imperial Troopers. Uh, I love these guys, and one of the things that is really cool about them that not a lot of the other teams here have in common is they have a ton of low gear viability. What do I mean? I mean, at gear 10 or gear 11 or whatever, as long as they go ahead of the enemy team, regardless of the game mode, they just destroy them. The way that you, this does require some Zetas, but every single time they gain a buff, which the Zeta is going to be coming from Admiral Piet's Imperial Trap, every single time they take a turn or assist, they get a buff and they just go and go and go and go. And they just maul over some teams, a lot of teams that are a lot stronger than them as far as GP goes. But yeah, they're just really great. And they they have two assault battles similar to the Rebel team. Actually, better than the Rebel team because they have two that they can max out and beat. Overall, they're pretty good in PvP. I've struggled a little bit with them and Conquest just because they're glass cannons in a sense. Meaning they can do a lot of damage and get out there really quickly. But sometimes they really struggle to take a punch. So they're not super great in that game mode. But they are pretty good in Dark Side Genosis Territory Battles. Which is pretty important game mode for a lot of people. So very good uh next up is going to be padme this is a little bit weird i have not talked about the padme team in a long time purely because i love qui-gon jinn gc padme is much more relevant than qui-gon jinn in every other game mode uh tw is a really important one tb is a really important one especially the genosis variation i think she has either she or ahsoka or gk or someone from the squad ends up having a crucial mission on pretty much every single phase i left the fifth slot open here just because i, I don't really have like a diehard decision of it has to be this character ideally it would be cat but we said we weren't going to do conquest characters so no uh shock is okay r2 is okay mace is okay uh bear so i don't really have geared up is okay plenty of good options pick one there's not really uh, a huge weight. I guess R2 is probably the best one to put because he's a building block character. Again, he's needed, ends up being needed for JML, so that's a pretty good perk. But I mean, if you have, I guess Mace is also a Galactic Legend requirement. So if you want to throw him in there instead, that's up to you. But really, these four are just really important overall. And the team is really solid. One of the things that has aged super well about Padme is the fact that she does massive amounts of max health damage. So we keep getting these characters that are just really, really strong. And as long as they're not immune to max health damage, just blows right through it's actually i have a lot of friends that like to use in rote tb they really like to use padme lead like ray or something like that to just delete the characters because the enemy team have like really obnoxious levels of health uh next up is going to be the hunters bounty hunters bounty hunters this is probably one of the teams you actually want to work on first number one they're a building block character or team because they help you get chewbacca and another thing that i haven't mentioned and this is really more early game that has been game 
credit heist is really important. You need to have a good enough scoundrel team to be able to beat that. And it doesn't have to be this exact team, but I'm guessing Bosk and Bobo are pretty accessible towards the beginning. So you can start with them, maybe even Bobo lead before Boss comes through the hard node. And they even have their own assault battle as well. I believe it overlaps with the Imperial Troopers, so you'll have to plan accordingly there. And then Bounty Hunters, it is just really stinking hard to not get a requirement for something. Grief and Mando, they're needed for BAM. Bosk is needed for the Executor, as well as Boba and Dangar. Uh, Boba Fett's actually needed for Jabba as well. But I mean, you, you just kind of go down the line. Like Django, he's needed for, I believe it's, is, oh, it's a, uh, uh, JMK, uh, Lord Vader, Executor uh lord vader again jabba like take your pick you, you you land on a requirement so i'm not really die hard about these last two who that to be these three are the core especially for 3v3 gac they're going to be the most important they're also just the core for 5v5 so there is that but i mean kind of you know the last two you decide it doesn't really matter um they all have most of them all have viability the only two that i'd really talk uh, trash about is cad bane and boba fett but even like like scion of Django. He's really good in TW and in 3v3 GAC, and Cadbane has a really good ship. So again, take your pick, have fun, get your Chewbacca, and keep building on those resources. Uh, next up is going to be Grievous. Very similar to the Padme team as well as the Gas team. Very important place in the Genosis territory battle. Uh, they have a lot of specific missions in there. Also, again, just really good PvP viability. They're, again, similar to both CLS and Gas. Just kind of sitting on that line of, not quite a galactic legend but in a lot of situations can punch up to beat a galactic legend and then we just keep seeing this reoccurring theme of they're all requirements for something uh general grievous is a requirement for jmk b1 b2 magna are all needed for gas i think uh, magna even double dips for jmk as well and then newt is needed for lord vader you don't need them at these relic levels for them to be considered a core team uh grievous himself at relics would probably be ideal but the rest can kind of sit at the gear 12 gear 11 area because Grievous actually doesn't totally hate it when they just die. He kind of goes crazy because of his metalloid monstrosity, a unique if I remember correctly. Next up is going to be Palpatine. I really like this team just because this is one of the first teams that everybody's going to be able to get. It does not really have, I mean, Emperor Palpatine and Thrawn are legendaries, but they're some of the most accessible legendaries out there. If you get the hybrid drive pack, or even if you don't, you end up getting characters almost immediately that are able to unlock them and already have kind of a premium team in a lot of ways. And again, every single one of these characters is required for either Galactic Legend or Starkiller, if not once, twice. So just a lot of viability, decent PvP viability. They've kind of fallen off in the later years. But again, you have to start somewhere. Some team has to start to get you going. And these guys are great especially with uh, Emperor Palpatine's Zeta here that just kind of launches the team forward. And it's it's kind of really fun to play with Emperor Palpatine, Thrawn, as well as Vader. Marjade's pretty cool too. And last but not least are going to be our is going to be our Jedi team. A uh, Jedi Luke actually is almost reasonable to put in here. And the main reason for that is because of the same reason Gas, he has, oh, not him, sorry. Wampa and Hoda, who are needed to get him, have been added to the MK2. So he's no longer a nightmare to farm. He's a lot... Still, still a hard character, still a legendary. You're still going to have to work for him, but he's much more accessible now than he was before. Uh, these three are needed eventually for the crate raid. Grandmaster himself is also needed for the uh, JMK event. But overall, this is a team that also has an assault battle. So Jedi Luke is going to be an amazing leader there. You might have to swap out some of these units that are not super ideal for that, at least for the final tier. But overall, like just a great investment, good, P good in PvP. Not super great. Well, I guess Jedi Luke is. But yeah, uh, General Luke lead is really good in uh, Genosis Territory Battle, so this even has lakes there. So again, good in a lot of game modes, is going to help you build up resources, is going to help you build up your roster and get you where you want to be. Uh, I guess we probably do have some honorable mentions. I think the most notorious is probably going to be Sith Empire, just because they kind of go hand in hand with the Jedi team, with Jedi Knight Revan here. The reason why we're not quite putting them on the list is because... Uh, they didn't wow me a lot in Conquest. I typically have one or two of them die. And the ultimate version of the team involves Malgus, who's a Conquest character. So maybe maybe they could be added, but eight, for whatever reason, sounds a lot better than nine to me. So that is going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I like missed anything specific, like, oh, Imperial Troopers also do this. Or if you think there's another team that legitimately beats out one of these, say the Ever Palpatine team, for example. But thank you guys for watching. Till the next time, stay awesome.